This video covers adding an SVG element. The structure of this video is as follows. D3 append revisited. Setting selection attributes. Circle example. D3 style operator. D3 legibility through JavaScript variables. The summary. All right, let's get started. D3 append revisited. First, let's take a look at the D3 append operator. This appends a new element with the specified name as the last child of each element in the current selection. Then it returns a new selection containing the appended elements. In addition to appending HTML elements, one can also append SVG elements. Setting selection attributes. Next, let's take a look at the attribute operator. This operator inserts an attribute and a value if specified into the elements in the selection. Then it returns a selection. The structure of the HTML markup is that there is a tag that contains attributes that have values. In the case of this SVG statement, the tag is SVG, the attributes are width and height, and the values are 50 and 50 which means that given a selection, D3 allows us to add a tag attribute and its value. Only one attribute and one value can be added at a time. So to add two attributes, you will have to use the chain syntax, which means we can convert the SVG statement to the following. Circle example. We will use this SVG circle as the example. This HTML file already contains an SVG circle. Next, we build one with D3. First, we check the version number to make sure it is working. Then we reload the browser. First, we select the class. Then we append a paragraph element to it. You can see that we added the paragraph element. Then we remove the paragraph element. You can see that I'm using the up arrow to cycle through the previous JavaScript commands. Next, we append an SVG element to the div class. Using the chain syntax, we select the SVG element and add two attributes to the SVG tag, with the width attribute being 50 and the height attribute being 50, which you can see in the HTML elements. Then we reload the browser. And this time we are going to append a circle to the SVG element that has a width and a height of 50. As you can see, we created the circle elements. Next, you can see that the circle that we already had has a CX, a CY, and an R value. So we can add these attributes to the circle that we are appending. As you can see, we continue to chain commands to our D3 command. And there we go. We have the circle that looks exactly like the previous circle, except it's missing the purple color. D3 style operator. The style operator, if a name and value is specified, sets the CSS style property for the given selection with the given specified value. The circle we created before was a black circle. How do we change the color to blue? One way is to add an attribute called fill and give it the value of blue. As you can see, this fills our circle with the blue color. However, D3 comes with a proper style operator. As you can see, it adds a style and fills the circle with the color blue. This does exactly what we wanted as well, to color the circle blue. Why then would we want to use the style operator to style elements? Because style behaves more consistently with external style sheets. The style operator ensures the element specific style takes priority over all other styles. D3 legibility through JavaScript variables. Thus far, we have chained our D3 commands to come up with this mess. While it is readable, it is hard to keep track of what the selection is, what has been appended, what attributes and values were given to it, and what, if any, style has been added to the elements. 
We are in luck for three reasons. One, D3 is built on top of JavaScript, so white spaces between function chaining is ignored. Two, almost everything in D3 returns a selection. And three, those selections can be assigned to variables using JavaScript, which means we can go from this to this. which when typed into the console works as follows. A great way to think about your D3 code is to separate into variables, the selection, whatever's been appended to that selection and the attributes that were applied to the elements of that selection. So in this case, we separate our variables into the div selection, the SVG selection and the circle selection. And as you can see, this creates the blue circle just as we wanted it with more legibility. And that is how you can increase D3 legibility through JavaScript variables. Lastly, we can add this into the HTML file and properly format it. I copy and paste the code. And as you can see, it's much easier to read than one giant jumble of letters on one line. This makes it much easier to read and understand. Summary. This video covered D3 append revisited, setting selection attributes, circle example, D3 style operator, D3 legibility through JavaScript variables, and the summary.